Hey, GB. This is Drew. And this Kelsey. And Kelsey. And Michael's also in our group. But, um, he's not here at the moment, so I think he's going to be sending you his um, part of the presentation separately. So our lady that we have is Elizabeth Anscombe. So we're going to be talking about her, and I'm going to start with her biography. So she was born in Limerick, Ireland. Um, she was born on March 18, 1919, to Alan Wells Anscombe and Gertrude Anscombe. Her father served in the milita military, and her mom was a teacher. Um, Anscombe attended school um, in a school called Sydenham and graduated in 1937 and went on to St. Hugh's College in Oxford. She graduated with a first-class honors degree, so she knew her stuff. In 1938 at Oxford, she met the philosopher Peter Geach, and they were taking classes from the same um, professor, and they ended up getting married, and they had three sons and four daughters. Um, she worked in almost every area of philosophy, but she's best known today for her work on the philosophy of action, which can be summarized by um, just acting with an intent. So, action with intent. Um, outside of philosophy, she's best known for con her conservative views on sexual ethics, which have inspired a number of student organizations calling themselves the Anscombe Society, and they promote chastity and traditional marriage, which I think is cool. Um, she's also well known for her opposition to the use of atomic weapons at the end of World War II, so she strongly opposed um, President Harry Truman for getting the um, Congressional Medal of Honor because he was the one who decided to drop the bomb and she didn't like that. Um, so her philosophy of mind, some of her most influential work was um, on the nature of causation. So that's basically the relationship between cause and effect. Um, she does not deny that events are caused, but she does want to insist that it is usually possible for things to go wrong. Um, so for an example, an arsonist might use enough gasoline to burn down a house without the house burning. Hold on, let's wait a second. So an arsonist might use enough gasoline to burn down a house without the house's burning down being ne necessitated by this act. Something might happen to spoil his plans and what this something might be cannot be specified in advance or in general because it might be all kinds of things. So basically this guy trying to burn down a house can't plan out the event perfectly um, because there's a lot of things that could go wrong. All right. And I looked into her philosophy of ethics, which she's also known for. Um, more of her modern moral philosophy. Um, virtue ethics is also something that she studied, and it's, it's a term for theories that emphasize the role of character and virtue in moral philosophy. Um, a lot of her virtue ethics were inspired by Aristotle's works. Um, it's believed that um, a lot of her moral ethics at the time, um, or she believed that moral ethics at the time of her studies correlated too closely with law conceptions. So this deals exclusively with obligation and duty, and she didn't agree with how um, basically the government was being ran. She claimed that philosopher Mills and Kant's representation of moral ethics made no sense without like the existence of a lawgiver. Um, a lot of people at that time were claiming that um, you could do good without laws, um, kind of like what we talked about in class, how um, that you didn't need a moral principle or moral role to um, do good or be good. Um, her ideas stimulated the development of virtue of ethics as an alternative to utilitarianism. Um, <clears throat> she believed in the return of conceptions or concepts uh, such as character, virtue, and flourishing. Uh, she emphasized her importance of emotion and understanding moral psychology. Uh, she recommended that people place virtue was more centrally in the understanding of ethics and morals. Um, so she basically believed that psychology was a big part of understanding um, why people did the things they did and why they um, believed that those were the right things to do. Um, she was very critical and confrontational about the approach um, when she set the scene for how virtue ethics was developed in the first few years and she was the one who really got that back up and ran, running because it kind of died down um, before her coming of studies. Um, 
All right, this next part is uh, Michael's part. Um, he can talk a lot, so I imagine that if he was the one talking, that we'd have a lot more time. But we're just going to kind of go through some of the stuff that he has. Um, we have philosophy of action. This is considered to be one of the most modern philosophies and is still used in modern psychology and action theory. It emphasizes intention from predictions. Um, it questions um, the nature of our intentions. So an example of that could be if I lose weight by running, that then the act of losing weight equals the act of running. Um, he also has on here contraceptive versus infertile times. I'm not sure what that means, but I'm sure he could explain it great. Uh, he also has the direction of fit. So he says, let us consider a man going around a town with a shopping list in his hand. Now it is clear that the relation of this list is to things he actually buys is one and the same, whether his wife gave him the list or the list is his own, that there is a different relation where a list is made by a detective following him about. If he made the list itself, it was an expression of intention. If his wife gave it to him, it is the role of an order. Um, what, what then is the identical relation to what happens in order and the intention, which is not shared by the record? It is precisely this. If the list and the things that the man actually buys do not agree, and if this, in the, if this alone constitutes a mistake, then the mistake is not in the list but in the man's performance. If his wife were to say, look, it says butter and you have bought margarine, he would hardly reply, what a mistake. We must put that right and alter the, the word on the list to margarine. Whereas if the detective's record and the, what the man actually buys do not agree, then the mistake is in the record. I have no idea what that means, but I'm sure Michael does. And he could explain it sometime. All right, that's it, GB. We appreciate it. Thank you. You're awesome.